Hi, I'm Bernie. And I'm going to Maker Central. Well, you can see on the front here, I call this the Maker Machine because to me, this is more than a project. It's more of a celebration of the Maker Central show. The very first time we're all gonna to get together in the UK to celebrate the community of makers, it's just gonna be an awesome event. I'm pretty excited about it, but I'd like to get into the build video right now and show you how I put this together. So here we go, I hope you enjoy it. Whenever I approach a project like this, which essentially is a blank piece of paper, I need to get my creative process going. And for me, the way that I do it is I set myself parameters. So in this case, I was thinking about this event, and it's about the maker movement, which a lot of people also consider to be the new industrial revolution. So with that thought in mind, I thought industry involves machines. Machines a lot of times involve gears. And so that helped me narrow it down to a gear themed project. Well, I'm no stranger to gears. Between my work with the first robotics competition and some of my other personal projects, I've got a real love for the way gears look and function. If you get a chance, check out some of my other videos. 507 Mechanical Movements is an amazing resource. You gotta check it out. I'll put the link below. And that's exactly where I found the concept for this reciprocating rack and pinion. Now that I had my idea done on paper, it was time to get into the computer, but before I started into Fusion 360 to do the CAD, I consulted my favorite gear calculator, Gearotic Motion. I jumped into Fusion 360 and started sketching, but soon realized that I needed to go shopping before I could build a CAD model. I wanted to be sure to choose components that would be available to makers anywhere in the world. At this point in time, everything is available from Amazon.com. The links are in the description below. Some manufacturers don't provide CAD models, so I had to make my own. This gear motor became its own little project. These extra challenges were a really big help in learning to model in Fusion 360. And now, back to the machine. This project demanded some pretty powerful CAD and CAM, and Fusion 360 did not disappoint. I'm very impressed with how intuitive the interface is. I'd like to thank Lars Christensen for all of his wonderful tutorials. They're very helpful. I place my McMaster car order right through the interface. I found the drawing module pretty easy to use. I made a tool library and a cup of coffee. Animating these joints was super helpful. Cam time. I laid all my components out flat in a separate document. This may not have been the most efficient way to do it, but it seemed to work pretty well. The three tool changes work flawlessly. This is really nice plywood. The link is in the description. I cut the plywood to 300 by 300 millimeter squares. As you'll see, I went through quite a bit of this plywood. A lot of trial and error trying to get these bearings to fit. This next segment illustrates my prototyping efforts that spanned over several weeks. I wanted to work out as many bugs as possible ahead of time before sharing this with other makers. Yep, I stuck my finger in the gears. Mm -hmm. 
Success. Now to cut the first full set of finished parts. I know this looks like a lot of screws, but this system works pretty good. Remember, if you're building one of these for yourself, always check my website for the latest design files. I'm sure there'll be updates. I cut my parts on a big machine, but it can easily be made on a desktop CNC router. I'd love to see somebody that owns an Inventables X-Carve or Shapeoko make one of these. It'd be great. I've got this working pretty good in plywood, but remember, if you're going to try making this machine out of different materials, always stick with either 6mm or quarter inch thickness. That's what the machine is designed for. Hey look, more gears. I've used this technique with blue tape before and it works all right, but if somebody out there has a better suggestion, please let me know in the comments. At this point, the machine requires 24 pieces, plus there's a couple of options. I gave all the parts a single coat of tongue oil for a little bit of color and protection. I wanted to stay as true as practical to the original Maker Central logo, so I started with distressed white paint and then carved through it. All the parts can be cut from four 300 by 300 millimeter sheets, including two logos. Amazon Prime makes shopping almost too easy. And of course, so does McMaster Car. Any old USB plug will work for this project. Five volt DC coming up. This device provides on and off switching and speed control. This polycarbonate cover is optional, but I think it looks nice. Tool check. That's better. The latest set of parts went together really smooth. This connection joint is really solid, but the tolerances need to be accurate. When buying hardware for this project, be sure to get the nylon lock nuts. They're critical to this thing working properly. The 10 ball bearings make this machine move very smooth. Now for the finishing touch. Alright, well, that was the build video. It was a kind of an overview of it. Uh, if you want to see a step-by-step, -step, stay tuned. I'm going to be putting a step-by-step -step video together pretty quick that has a lot of tips and tricks on how to go about putting this together, how to get the parts to fit right and all that stuff because there's a little bit of fine-tuning involved in that. So uh, stay tuned for that. Also check out the description down below because I'll have links to products, uh, some materials, tools that I use, tools that I recommend using for projects like this to do fine-tuning and trimming and things like that. So. Uh, check that stuff out and um, anyway, stay, like I said, stay tuned and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot for watching. <laughs> you gotta check this out. It's Nick. <laughs>